Hey there! So what I have for you today is a quick little video about pattern making again but today I want to focus specifically on making a pattern from a photo so I will just show you how I do this and I will give you my tips on how to make the best pattern from the photo you have and how to choose the best photo to make a pattern from it so it will look the best so without further ado let's get started so there are lots of videos on the subject on youtube but when i wanted to make my patterns i found that they don't answer my needs as following them you get huge intricate designs these are great if you're into that kind of cross stitch but i'm all for small fun easy patterns and so today i will show you how to make these rather graphic easy pictures like i did on my simply logical video first thing to do is to choose a photo you want to base your pattern on my first example will be Safia Nygaard, so let's google her. As we're going for a small easy pattern, we need something with not a lot of details. So if you want to cross stitch a person, you need to choose either a face alone or the whole silhouette, but then you might have to give up the face and make it kinda faceless like I did with Simply Nylogical. The reason is the face there is so small, eyes would be one stitch and it wouldn't look good. So you need to choose a photo that would make a person or an animal or whatever recognizable without a lot of details. I will choose this one as it's bright and clean. What I usually do first is I open the chosen photo in GIMP which is an image manipulation software and I remove the background and everything I don't want on my pattern. Here I will just remove the background. No need to be precise here, it will all get lost in the pattern design software anyway. I'm happy with the design so to the next step now. Still not sponsored? Let's go to stitchfiddle.com and create a new design selecting from picture and import the edited photo. From my experience, software like that tends to reduce the number of colors in a rather weird way, so I max colors number and I start making the size smaller. Oh and I forgot, rising contrast usually makes it a lot better. So I reduce the size to the smallest that still looks good for me. Then I try reducing colors, making sure it doesn't look weird. I'm gonna reduce it by myself later in the editor. I'm happy with it, so to the editor now. First, what is characteristic for Safia for me is her bold lipstick choices, so I want to make her lips turquoise. I also smooth her hair and eyebrows by coloring it all black, where there are some glitches and shaded places. Then, because I don't want to use like 20 shades of beige and orange, I'm gonna reduce colors by replacing colors that look alike with just one shade. Whenever it looks wrong, I just undo the replacement and try something different. I'm gonna hide grid lines so we see more clearly what it looks like. I will experiment a little more with coloring and replacing colors until I'm happy with it.
With a graphic design like this, all kind of text or symbols look great and so I decided to put one of Sophia's catchphrases on it. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. I'm gonna just freehand it so it won't look the best, but you get the idea. So we ended up with a design like that, 66 by 87 stitches, on 14 count ADA it would be 12 by 15 centimeters, and only 9 colors, pretty good, huh? A lot of you guys would probably like to cross stitch your pet, so my second example will be my dog Poppy. I want to use her face only, so first in GIMP I'm just gonna erase all the background and her body. I'm using black because she's very light and I want to have a high contrast so nothing gets lost. Then in Stitch Fiddle I'm just doing the same, max colors, make contrast higher and reduce the size. I will remove a grid so I can see it better and I'm gonna start making edges and all better and then reduce the colors just like with Sophia. I want to paint her tongue with a solid color, also when I picked her up from the shelter her ear was and actually it still is dyed green because they tattooed her ear to mark she was sterilized there and her hair got dyed. Don't be afraid to experiment and just check what works the best for you, you can always undo whatever mistake you do. Then I will just add her name and voila, my doggo is ready to be cross stitched. Now let's just take a short look at how I made simply a logical pattern with the exact same method. Alright, if you found that video useful then make sure to hit the thumbs up and check out my pattern making video about other methods. Also consider subscribing for more cross stitch related and other content and I guess that's it for today so see you in the next one, bye!